In this video, we're going to talk about how to evaluate algebraic expressions. So let's start with this example. Consider the algebraic expression 3x plus 2y, let's say minus 5z. And we're given that x is 2, y is 3, and z is negative 5. Go ahead and, and evaluate this algebraic expression. So if you're given a problem like this, what you need to do is substitute the values that you have. So x is 2. We're going to replace x with 2. y is equal to 3. So we're going to substitute y with 3. And z is negative 5. And now we just need to do the math. So 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 3 is also 6. Negative 5 times negative 5, that's positive 25. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 25 is 37. So that's the answer for this first example. Now, let's try another one. So let's say we have the algebraic expression x squared. Whoops. Plus 3x minus 4. And let's say we're given that x is equal to 4. Go ahead and evaluate the algebraic expression when x is 4. So this is going to equal 4 squared plus 3 times 4 minus 4. 4 squared, that's 4 times 4, which is 16. 3 times 4 is 12. And 16 plus 12 is 28. 28 minus 4 is 24. So that's the answer for the second example. Now, let's work on some other examples. Consider this expression, 2x squared minus 5y plus 3. Now let's say that x is 2 and y is equal to 3. Go ahead and evaluate those expressions given the values shown on the right. So we need to substitute x with 2 and we need to replace y with 3. Now we need to follow the rules of whenever we're doing order of operations which is we should start with exponents. 2 squared is 2 times 2 which is 4. And 5 times 3 is 13. Actually, no, 5 times 3 is not 13. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 15 plus 3, that's negative 12. And 8 minus 12 is negative 4. So this is the answer. Now, if you ever want to check your work, I recommend plugging in what you have after you substituted x and y into a calculator. So if you take your calculator and type in 2 times 2 squared and then minus 5 times 3 plus 3, check to make sure that it gives you your final answer, which in this case it does. Here's another problem. 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 5. And let's say that x is 6. Feel free to try that example. So first, let's replace x with 6. And so we have that. Now, 
Perhaps you heard of the expression PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But when you see this expression, what it means is that we should work with the operations inside the parentheses. And then we can work on the exponents. A and S means addition and subtraction. M and D means multiplication and division. The priority starts from the left and goes towards the right. So we need to work with the things inside the parentheses and the exponents first before we multiply or before we deal with addition or subtraction. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 squared, or 4 times 4, that's 16. Now we won't add 16 plus 5. We shouldn't perform addition. We need to perform multiplication first. 3 times 16 is 48. And 48 plus 5 is 53. So that's going to be the answer for this problem. And if you want to check your work, simply plug this in to a calculator. which I'm going to do to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Here's another problem that you could try. Let's say we have x squared minus 5 times x minus y raised to the third power. And let's say that x is 6, y is 3. Go ahead and try that. So this is going to be 6 squared minus 5 times 6 minus 3 raised to the third power. 6 squared or 6 times 6, that's going to be 36. Now before we use the exponent, we need to work the operation inside the parentheses. So 6 minus 3 is 3. Before we subtract, we need to work with the exponents first. And before we multiply, we need to work with the exponents first. 3 to the third power, that's 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. Now before we subtract, we need to multiply 5 and 27. 5 times 27 is 135. And 36 minus 135, the final answer is negative 99. But now let's make sure. Go ahead and plug exactly what you see into your calculator. And this answer is indeed correct. So now let's move on to the next example. Let's say we have the expression x squared plus 5y minus 2xy squared. And let's say that x is 5, y is 4. Go ahead and try that. So we're going to have 5 squared plus 5 times y or 5 times 4 minus 2 x and then y squared. 5 squared, 5 times 5, that's 25. 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 5 is 10. And 4 squared is 16. Now 25 plus 20, it's going to be 45. And 10 times 16 is 160. 45 minus 160 is negative 115. So that's the answer for this problem. But go ahead and plug everything in to make sure we have it right. That's how you know if you did it correctly. Just plug in what you have after you substituted x and y into your calculator and see if it gives you the same final result, which in this case it does. Now let's say we have this 3 times x plus 4 divided by 2x minus 3y. 
and let's say that x is 5, y is 2. Go ahead and try that. So replacing x with 5, we have 3 times 5 plus 4 over 2 times 5 minus 3 times 2. Now before we multiply, let's work on the operation inside the parentheses. 5 plus 4 is 9. And on the bottom we have 2 times 5, which is 10, minus 3 times 2, which is 6. Now 3 times 9 is 27. 10 minus 6 is 4. So we can't really simplify this fraction, so we could leave the answer like this. But if we want to, we can get the decimal value of this. 27 can be broken down into 24 plus 3. So 27 over 4, we can write it as 24 over 4 plus 3 over 4, because 24 plus 3 is 27. The reason why I broke it down like this is because 24 is the highest multiple of 4, just under 27. 4 can go into 24 nice and evenly. 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we have 6 and 3 fourths. So you could write your answer as a mixed fraction, or you can get a decimal value of it. 3 fourths is the same as 3 times 1 fourth. And a fourth of something is 25%, or 0.25. So this becomes 6 plus 3 times 0.25. And 3 times 0.25, that's 0.75. So you get 6.75 if you want the decimal answer. So you can write your answer in any one of these three formats. You can leave it as an improper fraction, 27 over 4. You can leave it as a mixed fraction, 6 and 3 fourths, or as a decimal value, 6.75. Now let's put this into application. A ball is thrown vertically into the air from a height of 6 feet at an initial speed of 45 feet per second. Use the formula shown below to calculate the height of the ball after 2 seconds. So the height is in, the unit for the height is going to be feet and the time is in seconds. So we have an algebraic expression that relates the height of the ball at any time t. So to evaluate this algebraic expression, we just got to plug in. And we're given that t is equal to 2 seconds. So let's plug in t into the formula to get the height. All we need to do is replace t with 2. Forty-five times 2 is 90. 2 squared, or 2 times 2, that's going to be 4. 6 plus 90 is 96, and 16 times 4 is 64. 96 minus 64 is 32. So the answer is going to be 32 feet. That's how high the ball will be in the air after 2 seconds. Now remember to check your work, plug this portion in the calculator exactly the way you see it. You should get the same answer. So now you know how to evaluate algebraic expressions. Thanks for watching.